Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on my channel related to geography and environment. So in today's session on climatology, we are going to discuss one of the very interesting topics of the climatology syllabus that is about the wind system. So out of the entire wind system, the first one that we are going to discuss is the planetary wind system or the permanent wind system, which is also called primary winds or invariable winds as well. So let's discuss the details of this wind, their nature, their characteristics and why are they called permanent winds. So all these things are going to be discussed in this session. But before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now, after we have learned about the various temperature and pressure belts, atmospheric circulation, atmospheric stability and instability on the entire earth, in this session today, let's understand about these movement of winds across these pressure belts that we see, right? So, we have learned about that there are various pressure belts on the earth, that is about seven different pressure belts and three on each side and one in center, so three pairs and one center. So what happens across these pressure belts? There is this wind movement that is triggered because of the difference in pressures. So let's understand these winds, what are its various factors and what are its various types. So today in this session, we are going to first learn about these winds which are called primary winds or they are also called prevailing winds or they are also known as permanent winds or planetary winds and many times also called invariable winds. So what you see here is one, two, three, four and five names of the same wind. So there are lots of names, primary, prevailing, permanent, planetary, all these are P. So four P's and one I. So remember this primary, prevailing, permanent, planetary, these are the same winds. And why are these names like this? Remember, because of this characteristic. The winds blowing almost in the same direction throughout the year. That's the reason they are called permanent in nature. They are also prevailing, right? And they are primary in nature. And also they are called planetary winds or invariable winds. Why? Because they involve large areas of the planet. Remember the entire tropical region, temperate region, polar region, the larger part of the planet. So that is at the regional level to synoptic level to the planetary scale. Remember the scales in planetology? So they are at the highest scale, the planetary scale they blow. So that is important. That's why they have these names of these permanent winds or prevailing winds or planetary winds. And because of this invariable character, so they're largely invariable in nature. Their direction is almost fixed throughout the year across the globe, wherever their direction is defined across the pressure belts. So they do not vary. And that is the reason they are known as invariable winds. So let's learn about these primary winds or these permanent winds or planetary winds or invariable winds in details today. So first of all, let's understand this particular image. What do we see here? That this is the intertropical convergence zone that is the equatorial trough area. And this is the trade wind that is coming towards it from both the sides, from both the hemisphere. So these are the trade winds. Remember, they used to facilitate trade in both the hemispheres. So that is why they were named trade winds. And what is the function here? Remember, this is a low pressure and this is a high pressure. So low pressure wind rise and high pressure they subside and this cycle, remember the Hadley cell. So this is how they blow in this particular direction. So their direction is fairly clear cut defined. So Remember, this is coming from northeast in northern hemisphere and southeast in southern hemisphere. So these are largely first kind of winds, that is the trade winds. Then we have westerlies. So west to east is their direction, just opposite of the trade winds. And then we have the polar easterlies. So from east to west is the direction. So these are fairly the winds direction, that is planetary winds direction that is defined clearly across these pressure belts. So these planetary winds, as you say, blow extensively over what? These continents and oceans. So remember, northern hemisphere has maximum of the continent portion that we see. So they blow fairly over these continents and ocean across the globe, across the planet that we say. So the two most well understood. So when we say this most well understood, it means we are relating it with human phenomena, with human beings, their zones of habitability. So the two most well understood by us, by human beings, because of their significance for climate and human activities are which winds? The trade winds and the westerlies. So largely or fairly you can say from this polar front, 
to this polar front in between these 60 north to 60 south this is fairly the zone where human beings are concerned and that is where these two major winds occupy which are these two winds one is the trade wind and the other is the westerly so we are largely concerned with these two major winds because this has maximum impact on human lives that is the major reason and then what happens to the polar ones, the polar easterlies? They are also known, but their impact is fairly lesser than these two winds, that is trade winds and westerlies, on the human beings. Why? Because these polar regions are very less inhabited. Remember, that is the major reason that human beings don't live in polar areas. So much of population is not there. And that is the reason that these winds are not of much concern for human beings in direct ways. But yes, if you talk about global climate change, global system of climate, then it holds a key. But in terms of direct significance, direct impact, if you see, only these trade winds and westerlies cover the maximum of this human horizon, if you see. So that is why they become very much important and that's why they are also called the most well understood planetary winds out of the three winds. Right? So let's go ahead and understand further more. So now let's begin with the first one of these planetary winds that is the trade winds. Now remember this is the belt from 30 north to 30 south. This is the zone that is largely what we say is the Hadley cell if you remember this tricellular model. So this is part of the Hadley cell. So this is northeast and this is southeast trade wind and they converge as this particular place that we know is ITCZ and that is how it regulates. So the trade winds are those blowing from subtropical high pressure. So this is a subtropical high pressure and towards equatorial low pressure. So this is an equatorial low pressure. So remember in the pressure systems and pressure belt studied it already. So therefore these are confined to a region between 30 and 30 that is north and south. So this is important and they flow as the northeastern trade. Remember this is called northeastern trade and this is called southeastern trade when it comes in the southern hemisphere. Now one question here is that why don't they blow in a straight line? Now you know the answer because of the Coriolis force. They are deflected towards right in northern hemisphere and left in southern hemisphere and that is why the Coriolis force is one of the most important forces that we always talk when we say that winds deflect. So that is why these directions are there. So if you remember this question that why this kind of direction is fixed, the direction has this role of Coriolis force as well. So they do not blow on this straight line, rather they deflect like this on right and they deflect on their left in the subsequent northern and southern hemisphere. So that is important to remember in context to the trade winds. So the deflection here that we talked here is because of the Coriolis force and we also say is because of the Ferrell's law. Remember the name of the scientist Ferrell? So remember this particular belt is known as Ferrell cell. This is Hadley cell. So Ferrell's law is also there of this deflection. So that is important. Now these trade winds are what kind of winds? They are descending and stable in areas of their origin. Now here is a catch again. In the areas of their origin. So where is the area of their origin? This is the area of their origin, this subtropical high. So this subtropical high is a place where what is happening? The winds are descending down and they are stable, right? And as they approach this particular equatorial zone, because of the heat factor, because of the insulation factor, the tendency is what? Remember, hot air rises up. So these winds start going upward when they are heated right and that is the reason they start doing this convection and that's why maximum rainfall also happens here because they pick the moisture and grow up and then finally what happens cloud formation happens and it rains so that is the whole system how it functions so as they reach equator what happens they become humid and warmer earlier at the source they are not humid and warmer at source they are actually stable and actually subsiding down they are cold so that is important to remember that at different points, at their source, they have different character and at their convergence, that is at the equatorial low pressure belt, they have a different characteristics. That is very much interesting in terms of trade winds. So furthermore, what we see is that these trade winds meet at equator and due to the convergence, they rise and cause heavy rainfall. 
So what you see is this is the heaviest rainfall area of the world and that is the reason precisely now you know why it is because these winds rise up here vertically and cloud formation happens and they have this heavy rainfalls in this region. So the eastern parts of the trade winds are associated with cool ocean currents and drier and more stable. Now remember when we say eastern part, where is the eastern part? Remember this is towards east and this is towards west. Right. So what do you see here is the eastern parts of the trade winds are associated with cool ocean currents and drier and more stable than western parts of the ocean. Now remember the eastern and western parts are important to understand in terms of the direction and also in terms of the pattern. So that is why you have to remember this that these eastern parts of the ocean and the western part of the ocean they have a differences in what conditions in their temperature conditions also in their moisture condition also and that is what further triggers more action in climate that we are going to study now come to the next one that is this subtropical high and further ahead towards the pole that is this polar front region so what happens in this temperate zone this is the zone for westerlies so remember now the wind is blowing from west to east and that is what is important here in westerlies in both the hemisphere. If you see, it is coming from west to east. So that is important. So westerlies are the winds blowing from subtropical high pressure belt. That is this particular belt to subpolar low pressure belt. Now this is a low pressure belt that we know. So what happens? It blows from here to this particular low pressure. So that is important to remember and remember this low pressure is not because of heating factor. It is because of this mechanical factor. Remember that is important because easterlies come here, westerlies come here and then they rise up and that is why there is a convergence here and that is that kind of mechanical low pressure that is important to remember as we have already talked in the pressure systems and pressure belts. So what happens in this mechanical low pressure belt that is also the subpolar low pressure belt they meet. So they blow from southwest to northeast in the northern hemisphere. Remember in geography, wherever we study, it's very much important to understand these directions. And they are fairly in terms of climatology very much important when we are discussing winds and their direction, right? So at the source, what you see, this is the source and this is the point where they culminate. They meet the easterlies coming from that side. So this is the direction. So what is this direction? This is the western part. So what you see, southern and western, this is south and west. So southwestern part to the northeastern part. So this is the fairly defined direction in northern hemisphere and exactly opposite from southwestern part to the southeastern part in the southern hemisphere. So that is equally important. Now, the westerlies of the southern hemisphere are stronger. Now, here is again one important thing, one important point to remember that westerlies in southern hemisphere, in the southern belt, they are very much stronger and persistent. Why so? Now, remember what you see here. Maximum of the land area is occupied in the northern hemisphere. But southern hemisphere has these vast oceans, right? So what happens due to this vast expanse of water, what do you see? The westerlies gain strength. So this strength is given to westerlies because of this vast expanse of water and convective cycle operating here. So you understand land and water, they heat differently and cool differently, right? So that is why this, there is a change of energy. So because of this vast ocean surface, more of energy is given to these winds, right? And that is the reason why precisely westerlies in this southern hemisphere are stronger due to this vast expanse of ocean, while those of northern hemisphere are irregular because of this distribution of land and water, which is very much important factor for the wind in atmospheric circulation. We already learned about the factors. So this is important here as well. Now further, what we see is the more characteristic thing. The westerlies are the best developed where from the 40 to the 65 degree latitude. So around this latitude to about this latitude, this is the zone where westerlies are most developed, most mature in that way you can say. So remember, what are they called there? They are called roaring 40s, furious 50s and shrieking 60s. 
these are the three major names for what for westerlies so especially in southern hemisphere because they are so powerful they are so strong in their direction of flow that they have these special names given by these sailors who were very much afraid of these winds because they were of great force so they gave these names what was that roaring 40s it's like tiger roaring in the 40s so at the 40 degree it is roaring it is furious at 50 degree latitude and it is shrieking at 60s so that is important to remember roaring 40s furious 50s and shrieking 60s in terms of the westerlies and remember the poleward boundary of the westerlies is highly fluctuating now this is the poleward boundary that is what is polar front so this is highly fluctuating there are many seasonal and short term fluctuations that are important to understand in this section and these winds produce wet spells and variability in weather because you see Easterlies are coming from this side and westerlies are coming here at this particular front there is lots of changes and wet spells that we see so that is where it is very turbulent and that is remember the temperate belt is also called zone of mixing so this westerlies being warm and easterlies being cold now they have different characteristics so this is why this kind of fluctuation in the weather this turbulence in the weather is experienced in those particular belts due to this westerlies and easterlies mixing at that particular front and now finally the polar easterlies now remember their direction is fairly easterly and what is the mechanism we have already learned that these winds which are going to this particular belt from high pressure to the low pressure what will happen they are going like this and then they rise up here because they converge and same process like here these winds rise at equatorial here also they rise right so they rise one branch goes back to the poles the other branch goes back to the tropics that is about 30 degrees right so this subside here they subside here so there is a feral cell regulation and there is a polar cell regulation remember so that is what happens so polar easterlies are created how now just understand this simple phenomena that is important to understand and later when we study polar vortex phenomena there also this particular circulation will matter so understand that when these winds go up in the air and then they start cooling down and they subside at the poles. What happens here? They start creating this high pressure zone at the poles, right? So that is where polar high pressure belt is created. And from high pressure belt to this subpolar low pressure belt, that is important here. These winds flow. And why is their direction easterly? Now remember again, the Coriolis force and the waves that generate here. Remember, we have learned about Rossby waves. So that is important. So that's how these polar easterlies get their eastern direction because of this particular deflection here. And that is because of the Coriolis force, as we know. So this is the entire mechanism of rise and fall of winds. We have learned that in details in the previous lectures in basically the pressure systems and pressure bells as well. So if you have not watched that video, please go to the video that is temperature and pressure bells and understand there in that particular video as well. So what you see here is these polar easterlies are what? Dry, they are cold and prevailing winds blowing from north east to southwest. It's the same direction roughly what you see of the trade winds. Remember? This is the same direction, this and this has the same direction almost. So polar easterlies and trade winds have a similar kind of direction that is coming from northeast to southwest in northern hemisphere and again the just opposite that is in the southeast to northwest. So this is the direction in the southern hemisphere. So exactly like the direction of trade winds. So that is why they are part of the planetary wind system or permanent wind system or invariable system of winds. So that is important. They blow from polar high to subpolar lows and we have already discussed this in circulation. So that is important to understand in terms of polar easterlies. So what did we learn? These three major winds, that is the trade winds, the westerlies and the easterlies, that is polar easterlies as the major chunk of the winds that blow on the earth for a fairly larger area and also in a more or less fixed direction. That is why they are called planetary winds or primary winds or invariable winds that we have learned. So now, when we have discussed about the details of these primary winds or the permanent winds, in the sessions to come, we are going to look at the next set of wind at the next scale, that is the lower scale or the regional scale, that is the secondary winds, which are the variable winds in the sessions to come. So stay tuned, stay safe and all the best wishes.